CFD is basically a computerized wind tunnel, and we use it daily to answer questions like which parts should you select, what are the opportunities in your class of racing for big improvements, and what ride height and rake should you run. So in the past, you would either go to the wind tunnel or go to the track. Going to the track is time consuming because it might take you a season to work through a basic aero program. And in either case, you're going to be making a lot of parts, which can be costly. So on the other hand, it might take me a little bit of time to create a CFD model, but once you have it, we can create and exchange parts very quickly and cheaply. The Grassroots 350 was a good example. They wanted to make the car faster, but they're not nearby. I sent them a how-to, they scanned the car themselves. By sending me an image set, I was able to create an STL, which we turn into a CAD model. Once the CAD model is built, we can blow it in our virtual wind tunnel and find the answers thereafter. This is an example of the pictures that we got from Grassroots. About 400 of these go together to make something that looks like this. And this scan gives us a CAD model that we can now basically 3D trace to create our parameterized CAD model, to create a 3D solid. We really want a 3D solid because then we can hack at it, put radiator ducts in it, add things onto it, modify it as we want. So once we have the scan file, we bring it into CAD. While this looks like a nice car, it's not smooth, it's not seamless, and it's definitely not sufficient quality to create a CFD mesh on. So to do that, we have to spend about three weeks turning this data into sketches, and from these sketches, we create a surface. Now our surface model is the first step. If you want to know more about that, you can look at our YouTube channel where we go through the first six or so steps of this CAD model. Once we have that, we can create a solid, and from the solid, we can start subtracting radiator ducts, and we can also modify it by adding things like splitters and dive planes. Each model is unique because each competitor has their own setup and their own body parts that they like to run. Uh, on the other hand, we can learn enough about the platform to create an aero package that should be applicable to all of that body style. Now that we have a robust CAD model, we can add or subtract pieces at will, such as these dive planes, and then we can run it in our CFD model and get some results. SolidWorks flow is pretty useful for internal flow and other simple questions, but if you want to accurately measure forces on a car body, you really need a lot more resolution and you need some of the details of open foam. The bottom line is we've invested the time to correlate with wind tunnel and real world data so that we know our numbers are real. After roughly 16 hours, we start to get pretty pictures back, which can tell us a lot of information, but the real answers are in the numbers. So while this program of 20 runs still costs about $5,000, nobody has to travel, no parts have to be built, and you can take your time between each run to decide where you want to go next. So while wind tunnels are great because they use real air, uh, we also can model the tire spinning and the ground moving. So we get a much better resolution of the boundary layer between the car and the ground. So part of the value of CFD over a wind tunnel is being able to slice sections through the model. So we can see things like trapped air in the hood, which you'll never see in a wind tunnel. Sources of pressure is a big key of what we look for. One of the aspects of that is this backup of pressure is part of what makes a splitter work. We, we attempted to add hood vents to the car, which relieved a lot of the pressure in the hood, but it also made the splitter work less. So even if you're a clever guy at the track and you realize that you're trapping air under your hood and you cut vents to relieve some of this high pressure, you may not also realize that you're taking some of the high pressure off your splitter and losing front downforce. So people often ask us what works and what doesn't. And the answer is always, it depends. In this case, we found that certain devices only work when paired with other devices. One thing that worked well on this car was dive planes. Every time we add dive planes, we get roughly 10% front balance and we add downforce. Following on the comment about the sealed engine bay, we were all keyed up to make some hood vents, but we found that it consistently relieved enough pressure off the splitter that it's not a gain. We found that it reduced drag every time, but in most cases it takes downforce off the splitter. Part of the reason we invest all the time to model the internals is because they do matter, especially radiator flow. We did run this without the engine bay. We ran this with a solid block in place of the radiator and engine, both with and without our splitter spillboard ramps and wing package. And in both cases, it lost drag. In both cases, it gained downforce. In both cases, it gave data that was not accurate. It threw off balance by 30% on our package. Since the goal of what we're trying to sell here is a balanced aero package, we need a model that's accurate enough to tell us what that balance is. So based on all this work, the package we're recommending the grassroots is the Nine Lives rear wing, coupled with a Nine Lives splitter and Moreland Engineering carbon splitter ramps. So if you'd like to see your car in our virtual wind tunnel, Prices start at $4,500 and you can find all the details at our website, morelandengineering.com.
Support brands that support grassroots motorsports. Get your chemical solutions from CRC Industries. Visit crcindustries.com to learn more.